practice and giant big players like Lucic, Cassian, and oh. Patrick can't miss Maroon. Oh. oh, experience. Doofuses. Doofuses was the key to unlocking the mystery of the Edmonton Oilers. Shots, everybody come to their net. We, we just have to get more and more pucks to the net. Well, that's the key. We got to get the puck on net. What were you saying about putting pucks on net? Puck on the net, puck on the net. He's got that, that nick for the net, too. He just throws puck on net and keep putting pucks on net. Continue to put pucks on the net. Pucks on net and, and uh, driving and making a hard night on it. I want tape from Gita's apartment, her palatial estate on the 23rd floor. This is Pucks on Net, a Vancouver hockey podcast that doesn't talk about fantasy or fancy stats. But if all goes well, I might reference some fancy stats later on in the podcast. I have a chart, so I just want to warn you guys in advance. I'll quit the show. Okay, well, just we'll do your exit interview once we talk about the fancy stats. It's going to be like Mike Smith's from the other night. Uh, disgruntled former employee, Dave. He tried. He showed me a Gantt chart. He showed me a pie graph. <laughs> and I started my own new show. <laughs> um, what Dump we did- and Chase with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd probably listen to that, actually. Dump and chase. Is there like a dating element advice in there as well? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm gonna roll out. I'm gonna roll out my uber successful plan to add a social media component to dump and chase when the time is right. I was just building on pre-pod conversation. Why don't we Sorry. just uh, make that our dating segment of the podcast <laughs> and call it dump and chase? It's dump and chase. This week in romance with Gita. <laughs> hey, I might have some dump and chases going. Nah, no, <laughs> just uh, dumping. No uh, chasing. Uh, new year, new podcast. So once again, we're going to go around the horn and introduce ourselves to. So I'm Ryan, and I've been regularly dehydrated this week. Uh, I'm Dave, and uh, it's laundry day, so I'm down to these colorful socks. Oh, I'm I'm on my last pair of undies too. I'm Gita. I broke a nail. <laughs> I'm Paul, and they're all giving you way too much information. <laughs> that's Sorry, it's fair. Yeah. Uh, we got a quick turnaround here, but luckily lots of th- exciting things happened in the last 70, 96 hours, give or take. Um, Regale us. There were two hockey games, both featuring the Canucks and Calgary Flames. Gita and I went to the game on uh, on Friday night, and it was the, one of the more interesting uh, nights we've ever had at the game at the Rogers Arena. I heard that you were you were accosted by a Calgary Flames fan. Uh, Groped. Uh, Groped not is the word. Ryan wasn't the only one that was accosted that well, night. Well, we don't oh, know no. if he was a Flames fan. He was just a drunk old man. Who nearly got a little too close to um, parts of my anatomy. Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 what is going on here? Yeah, you know, uh, they built Rogers Arena... Uh, the, I, the the rows are very close together because it's built between two viaducts and they had to jam it all in. So when we arrive fashionably late after the podcast, like Toronto Maple Leaf fans, you know, we show up when we want. We sat down and there was this weird old man that um, I, I had a I had pizza and a beer in my hands. And he's like, oh, hey, thanks for bringing that by. And I'm oh, like, I hate that joke. And I'm like, ha ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's like, no, seriously. And I'm like, all right, that, you know, leave me alone. Yeah. Third time, I'm like, I'm like, all right, random old man, cut out the dad jokes and leave me alone. He's like, oh, can you believe this guy? Random old man. Like he was a this old, this old weirdo. And he's bugging me throughout the first period. And and then he, and then intermission comes along and him and his buddy get up to go out yeah. to the concourse. And like, you know, we you, you, you stand up, you suck everything in. And like, he's like pretending to like, loses balance around Gita and he's got like one hand on the small of her back and I, I can't I didn't yeah. see and, and then, then the another other... hand is like hovering what hovering wow. and what okay like deliberately hovering did you right call that there. number they show on the hang big on, screen on, Ryan this is one of the few times in your life where you have full license and especially even with security there you probably could have hit this guy in the face now, and it all would have been well fine. that's the thing the, there was had, four of us sort of in this interaction and everything just sort of stopped and like, because we were we were all just sort of waiting to see is he now going to do it? If he if he did it, I would fully expect you oh. to sock him one right in the kisser. Well, it was I saw what was going on, and I'm just like, you know, fist. You were ready, and I'm like, God, here we go. And like, Gita's looking at me. I'm in looking. this episode, Ryan gets an assault charge, <laughs> well, but it's justifiable. <laughs> it gets worse because if I punch the guy out, oh, 
Who's the guilty party? The, hey. the, the nice old man or the young guy punching people the in his drunk num- old man in his <laughs> strip club t-shirt? You, oh no. you oh. explain to me exactly what happened. I'm the first guy down at lock up on Main and Hastings getting you out of jail. You'd be in, it's going on my fucking visa. <laughs> you'd be on Rogers Arena jail. I've been there with uh, with Dan once. I've, 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 after you told us that story, I had to go look at it. I had to go see it. I've seen it. <laughs> so I was like, this is where he had to go. So we did the like it, it, time froze and his yeah. his sense sensible f- friend or co-worker was like he ca- he caught it right away he's like uh, i'm getting him out of here so he hauled him out oh so there was like full acknowledgement yeah yeah there was the, total like all, all four of us knew exactly what was well the third guy was just needing another tall boy of mike's hard lemonade yeah but so that's why it didn't get too unruly but i uh but then when they got back they swapped seats and he's like i'm really sorry about him and we'll you know he'll be on this side i'm like yeah but he's just so weird but luckily um, I might have just preeminently caved his face. We yeah. uh, <laughs> luckily somebody gave us uh, other seats to sit in. Oh, nice! So if you uh, we were moved for the third period, although there you know it was without incident, but crossing going to those other seats, this Calgary Flames fan—I don't know if it was a Flames fan—but this dr- this guy just wasted drunk. It's eight o'clock in the evening too. He's just staring at me like you know, glazed over, weaving back and forth, and he just goes like. Ah, uh, like hand over my face, <laughs> north south. <laughs> and I'm like, like I just, thought it was a friend. It was such an intimate gesture. And I'm looking at him like, do I know this guy? And he's just like, was he blind? Did he just want to see what you looked like? <laughs> yeah, it was like a guy yeah. in his twenties, and I just assumed it was someone that worked with Ryan because it was so intimate. He's feeling my face. <laughs> oh, you're a handsome man. <laughs> um. I don't understand. Who are these millionaires who are going to the games that can afford the well, multiple $30 buckets of beer? <laughs> I don't think millionaires are going to the game anymore. People are blow. Oh, it was Paycheck Friday last week. Well, the there flames were in town, too. Oh, yeah, that's going to bring out the riffraff. That brings out the oil money. That oil money is gone. Save your money, kids. <laughs> Go watch some high school football for free. <laughs> <laughs> Keystone ain't coming in. Uh, so, yes, if... Uh, we had a very helpful ticket representative at the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Isn't he Friday. a sponsor of the show? If you Can need, we mention him by name? If you need tickets, uh, call the uh, season, Canucks season ticket office. Ask for Cole. Tell him Pucks on Net sent you. That's Cole Renner, Canucks season tickets. Uh, Anto- Cole, middle name, Goal <laughs> Renner. Yeah, his, his nickname is Goal Renner. He's the best softball dad I ever had. Oh, I got to <laughs> take him home for a steak dinner in the next couple of weeks. Big Just, time. Well, I really got to. You might have to touch his face. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we uh, we st- spoke a little in the last couple of weeks about how we're starting to question Willie Desjardins' uh, abilities as a coach at this level of uh, play. And well, he's doing oh, it too now, isn't he? Are we going to get it? This is a fancy stat, but it's a fancy stat we should talk about. What? Ice time? Time on ice. <laughs> <laughs> I. Oh, we're not going to talk about his comments? Oh, what comments? Did you not hear that he's like questioning his play too? Yeah, he's like, I don't know what I have with him. Uh, well, in order to know what you have with him, you've got to play. You got to kind of like put him on the ice. That I couldn't believe. Like, he's overthinking everything. He's like, well, you know, the fourth line only had two minutes in the first period, so if I get him in there, that's only a minute, and they're not going to be at their best of the minute. Well, you're running four lines. Shouldn't all four lines be playing a little bit more? You know, your fourth line be playing more than a minute? Because I know how much you love Jack Skilly and Jack Shapoo, or whatever his name is. But, and, okay, so Ben Hutt. Mike Shapoo? Well, whatever. <laughs> Hat. He got a goal at the game you were at when you were getting groped. I was too, <laughs> yeah, I was too busy, tape, you know, f- taping up the foil and uh, giving, giving passerbys my wallet and keys in case I got in a brouhaha. Doesn't sound like you were doing that. I would have fought. I, okay, I'll tell on the record, I would have punched the guy in the face if he honked, if he, if he uh, honked, honked Gita. I would have, come on. Could you please not talk about me like that? If he sexually assaulted you? Yes, that sounds a little more classy. I would have gone. I think he kind of did. I think small of the back. That sends a lot of. Yeah. That's yeah. That's too much. I would have called. That's that already line, too much. That line, the security line. Ah, oh, the graphic that I made. Yeah, yeah. I would have been texting that number I put on my graphic, or I would have just like knocked Snapped him over the a picture of him. I would have low bridged him. I would have just shoved him into the seats. <laughs> I would have sacrificed the people sitting in front of me. Like he's gonna topple over onto them. <laughs> He probably oh, would have gotten a few rows. Oh, you slipped. Oh. Oh, shucks. Oh, no. No. And then maybe, or maybe I would have held them up and just like, you know, like take care of her own business. Oh. Grab them, put them in a full Nelson. She can work the kidneys. <laughs> I know. I think it was just one of those moments where everything stopped. Time cut. When those, yeah. in all, all kidding aside, when those moments happen, yeah. 
time does really slow down. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, I got to be as smart as humanly possible here. I'm this wearing a strip club t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Your, your street cred. Yeah, but we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, your street cred is your street. <laughs> your, your, yeah, yeah. That's that shirt. You made your choices. You're only as good as that shirt, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben Hutton, 15 minutes before puck drive, he pulls out of the game. He says he can't play. He's injured in some capacity. Mm-hmm. We don't know. I heard it was diarrhea. If it was, like, he would have been. No, because he's not playing. They've called up Padan, and he's not playing in the it's next game. explosive diarrhea. Yeah, he's still. He's long still, term. He's still in the <laughs> long term. <laughs> he's still in a stall at the Saddle Dome. Oh. I got my own plane ticket. Don't worry about me. Oh, jeez. I got a full battery in here. I could be in here for weeks. <laughs> you talk about guys being dehydrated. <laughs> um, so, Willie, yeah. the smartest, you know, real, uh, real sharp guy here. He decides to take out an injured player mm-hmm. and replace him with an under, another injured player to sit on the bench and play zero minutes. Because Anton Rodin, we learn, banged up his knee uh, in the Friday night game during the, uh, unfor- the unpleasantness. Okay. Yes. So. And there was another Canucks player available in the press box. Reed, uh, his new, uh, Reed Boucher, his nickname is now Bounce. Because well, it's that's, always been Bounce. Yeah, that's what iPhone autocorrects Boucher to. Mm. So Bounce Boucher, he's only, he could have played. He's fine, but he's only had one practice with the team. And okay. you can't have a guy with only one practice who's played hockey since he was five to go out there and not screw it up. Like sit on the bench and not play unless you're really in a tight spot. Yeah, but instead, Willie Desjardins decided to voluntarily short Hand, um, yeah, you're, handcuff himself. Handcuff right. his you're not, team. You're not using your whole lineup, yeah. and like you got so here's also what, he's humiliating a player. Yeah, that's, that's it's a big it's a, yeah. There's certainly that aspect of it as well. That's fair enough. You got to factor that in. But like maybe you look at one of your guys who's played some defense, maybe at the junior level, and maybe you slot him back there as a six guy. Like mm-hmm. he, these guys are professionals. Like I know they didn't play defense nece- necessarily at the NHL level, but they're decent enough players, and they've seen it done that they could probably be serviceable and therefore because like my issue is less about letting Rodine rot and that you went with five defensemen in a 60 minute National Hockey League game voluntarily that's crazy and you have a win streak on the line you got all this good stuff going for you it's a you know you want you're, you're so keen on making the playoffs and you're just gonna give away two points to a division Jack, rival Jack Skilly's a big guy with a good shot and he's a defensively responsible forward Brendan Gaunt same thing mm-hmm. they any of those they, guys on the bottom line and they're none of them are that slow that they couldn't play yeah. D slot them back on the bottom pairing and give Rodin a regular shift and if it's a disaster it's then a- go to 5d and shorten up but like to have a guy sit on the bench and not play at all is an embarrassment yep there's no way there's no other way around it it is embarrassing and you he's like we'll just play with 11 forwards and also this is like and they, they talk they talk about Utica being such a great spot for the farm team because of the fan support and the lack of travel in the AHL, blah, blah, blah. This is one of those times where if you're against that and you want the Canucks to join the California is the place you ought to be, mm-hmm. uh, a gang, then this is an example of why the Canucks maybe move the Comets to Fresno <laughs> or the Key Arena in Seattle where like it's a quick hop, skip, and a jump to the Saddle Dome. Well, yeah, isn't the whole point of that to serve your big club? Yeah, they don't see it that way in, in Vancouver. Are, are we seeing uh, why Jim Benning won't pick up guys off waivers right now, though, with uh, Boucher just, oh, I, I can't, if I haven't seen him play, I can't play him. No, well, and just I can't see him play unless I play him. And, so. in, and you know, with, the, with, the, with the NHL having so many rules tied into the CBA, there's very few practice days. They'll be lucky to get a second or third practice in by the end of next month. Do you really? Is Willie the coach for this team? Yes, because you know who's a good scout? Jim Benning. And Jim Benning could say, here's exactly what kind of a player this is. I know you haven't seen what he can do, but I don't want my head I don't want my head coach going out playing a game against a divisional rival with one less player. Like it's just put him out there. It's Bush League. It's Wait. so rookie ball. Is it tanking? No. Because they they, they were in a playoff spot at the you don't yeah. you don't it's like when when Emilio Estevez said Goldberg, you don't no. dive when they're shooting at sorry. you. Sorry. You don't tank when you're in a playoff spot. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I mean is like Jim Benning management ownership giving Willie a huge leash because they're like does it doesn't matter. They're giving him a huge leash because they're smart enough to know that this team probably isn't good enough that if we brought in a new coach, it wouldn't make much difference. So why exactly. pay two guys to do one job? Because you still got to pay mm. Desjardins. Out. No matter what happens, like make the playoffs, miss the playoffs by a lot, miss the playoffs by a yeah. little. Willie Desjardins is still the coach of this team in April. And the He's team. not getting fired. 
And this team really seems to like playing for him because well, maybe they are not everybody. <laughs> the guys who played, maybe. <laughs> guys named Brandon Sutter and Brandon Sutter and Jason hey, Magna and Jack Skilly. Jack Skilly and Brandon Sutter. That Shaput. <laughs> <laughs> who are these people? Just the ones that practice the most? He's yes. the new guy that next time we all go to the bar, I'm going to say that's who I am. <laughs> no one knows what he looks like. Uh, let pass up the middle. Oh, wait, Still, no, he doesn't. Still one of the funniest things that ever happened. <laughs> that guy tried to th- throw a punch at you. And missed. But he missed by so much. <laughs> it was like, I think the guy that felt up my face was the guy that... that like, ah, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had somebody try to punch me and miss by that much before. <laughs> it he missed pe- me by a foot. If people don't know the backstory, it's been told a couple times before... Dave was mistaken for Lyndon Vay yeah, one I was, time, and I wasn't somebody threw a punch because nobody likes Lyndon Vay yeah. in Vancouver, apparently. I wasn't impersonating Lyndon Vay. The guy just thought I was Lyndon Vay. <laughs> We're standing outside joking, all right, we'll just tell him you're Lyndon Vay, then we'll get in. You know, that's easy no, peasy. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what happened. Yeah, I was pretty, did, pretty close. No, we're did like, you guys say, wait, I haven't heard this half of the story. What, we were standing outside. But it was a private conversation between the four of us. Yes. Like, we weren't talking to him or anybody else. And this oh, but you still weren't claiming to be Lyndon Vay. No, no one claimed to be Lyndon we Vay. Were, we, we were hatching were, our plan to get into the bar as him I being Lyndon I hadn't even agreed to the plan. <laughs> Ryan just said it, and uh, the guy heard him. I'll be Hunterson Carrick, you be Lyndon Vay. It does Lyndon. change the story a little. I just thought he but legitimately he, out of nowhere. No, but it was out of nowhere. Vay. It wasn't yeah. even like, you're Lyndon Vay. It was... Yeah, with your outlet pass it, was the next thing he said, <laughs> and he swung and missed. It was, but it, there was a suggestion there, but that not you direct, might be Lyndon, Vay. but not directly at him. It was to his the back. I of his know, head. I know, but it was there. Yeah, that just ruined the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. I'll pretend I'm Lyndon Vay was more or less what Dave said, yeah. and it was not like we're not proclaiming it to the lion. We're just like, hey, you pretend to be Lyndon Vay. Lyndon Vay, yeah. Jesus. Poor Lyndon. Is he still in the I, NHL? I uh, have. I did run into Lyndon Vay. He was at the McDonald's in the food court <laughs> at Pacific, not Pacific Center, whatever, the, Waterfront Center. When is his that food court by city? our office? This was the no, this was, oh. this was when he was with the team. Oh, okay. When is his episode of Dateline NBC going to air? For what? When, uh, oh, yeah. I forgot about oh. that. The, the murder plot. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. You could have told me Lyndon Vay was still on this team and I would have believed you. He's, he's not in he's the organization. And I don't... To be clear, I don't think he was eating at McDonald's, but he was standing right in front of the McDonald's. He wasn't so staring he at have. the wall. Was he? Was he? Was he? Uh, was he? Was he repping the hockey cards? The upper deck <laughs> McDonald's. Maybe. Maybe that's what it was. He was pretty young. He might have still had a young guns card. Yeah, it's like my Dane Jackson rookie card we were talking about. Dane Jackson. Oh, this Dane is Jackson. a um, m- longtime listener, Matthias Fallman. He uh, one of the questions he wants us to answer. I've always. He says we is that pronounce a fake. His, is that a fake name? No, we no. It's Matthias or Matthias, Matthias from Matthias. Delta. Uh, just we, the way he said or New York. Fallman. Uh, Fallman. It sounded like he was making up the last Smith. name. Is he from Delta or New York uh, or Buffalo he's or from, whatever? He's from uh, Delta. Right. Uh, he asked. He wanted to know what our favorite uh, underrated Canuck of all time was, and so I, I kind of mentioned this to Paul. And we're looking at. Like hockey DV, we're going through a couple of years, yeah. and what was his name? You picked out Dane Jackson, and I instantly remembered him, but you had no idea. And he goes, was. "Oh, I got a." Uh, he goes, "I'm like, who the hell's Dane Jackson?" I click on him. He's like, "I'm pretty sure I've got his rookie card." And he goes, <laughs> "No, I'm not pretty sure. I know I have yeah. his rookie card." So we you look at score. His, you and his mom. <laughs> so we look at the uh, hockey DV, yeah, and it's like AHL, 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 NHL. He played for like Buffalo, the Canucks, and I think Islanders, the Islanders. I think. And so I'm like. Oh, he's uh, he's got three jerseys in the rumpus room down in Cal Cigar. Uh, what, I wonder if he's still alive. And it's we go from like, oh, who's this guy to oh, what a what a career AHL or two. I wonder if he's dead to oh, is he assistant coach of Brock Besser in North Dakota? Oh, so it was a fe- real feel good story. So he's doing okay. UND, yeah, <laughs> associate coach. I'm, if I'm going to talk about most underrated Canucks of all time, my brain immediately goes to Artem Chubarov. Yeah, that was one oh, we yeah. we mentioned. Yeah, that was a big loss when he went to the to the KHL. Yeah. He was a very serviceable third line center. He was a Manny Melholtra kind of guy. Yeah. I picked um I want I wanted to go with a goalie because I really liked Alex Ald when he was here and how he started, you know, just in the moose. He earned his way onto those onto the team and when he when player when goalies went down, he legitimately gave the Canucks a shot and I really liked He had to play like seventy straight games that one year. That's right. Yeah. Mark Crawford started him every single night. 
because they signed a guy named Maxine Willett, who was Max. And they Hatt. brought in Mika Nurinen. Mm. Oh, Mika Nurinen. Yeah, second round pick for three games played, and then he went to the plane crash league in Russia. Oh. Paul, Did he survive? You? Yeah, no, he wasn't okay. on that team. Alex sold, though, is a great example when the Canucks sold high. Mm-hmm. Because his stock was probably about as high as it would get. They then. got a lot. They got a nice return on that trade. It's a good looking <laughs> trade. Yeah, no, you were saying like, oh, I wish they still had Brian Allen. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, he'd be good. But they got six pretty good years out of the guy they traded Vancouver for. got like, a good deal. And I yeah. Like, yeah, I think you got a good point. Mike, you, that was Mike but, Keenan's but, make good for m- bringing Messier in. I mean, the two and you picked them both out, but they were like two of my favorite guys on the team for. I like underdogs, but Trent Klatt and uh, Yarko Rutu brought a lot to the See, lineup every I would night, say even if they weren't on the score sheet. I would say they're overrated. because they're, I guess they're, they're remem- fan favorites. They're remembered fondly by a lot of people, but if you look at their numbers, it's like, man, yeah, Darby Hendrickson put up similar <laughs> numbers. But it, the thing with those guys, though, is they put up decent numbers as bottom six guys, but they would bring a lot of energy. Klatt threw a lot of hits, played a physical game, and Rutu would get a lot of guys off their game, so... Which it's our fa- they're, they're it's our favorite. We still fondly numbers think of that there. line yeah, with the Sedins. If only they could yeah. find a guy like Trent Platt. <laughs> you know who was super underrated was Murray Craven. Murray Craven. Who was there? Uh, a couple I was going to throw names. out the name Bill McCult. <laughs> For like half a year. For half, <laughs> but is, when he was be- on. This is becoming very inside and very Canuck centric. Okay, so we'll, I can hear all the East Coasters just turning. Wasn't us the off. question underrated Canucks? It was underrated Canucks. Yeah. But yeah. The one last thing I want to talk about the Canucks was. There were two players on the Canucks on Saturday night that opted to play defense for the team, and I'm wondering if you guys can name them. Oh, like they offered it up? Yeah, there were two players oh, that yeah. Willie... Ed- can I go Willie- first? Yeah. Edler. <laughs> for once. For once. I don't know, Eddie. We kind of like what you do and you've been doing. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll go. I'm going to say Henrik Sedin offered himself up because he's the captain. Okay. And... I'm going to say Ryan Miller. That Daniel, would have been mine. Daniel Sedin. Daniel and Henrik, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They love they love blocking shots and, and, and back checking. It was. Yep. Mine would have guessed, I would have guessed Ryan Miller as well. <laughs> have you seen him without, without in regular street clothes? He's tiny. He attacked <laughs> Matt Martin. It was uh, Brandon Sutter okay. and uh, versatile Alex Burroughs. Oh. I think Burr's played some D before. I think so. I think he could. I mean, it's can you skate backwards? Do you know where to be? Well, when you're undrafted, you're basically like, you want me to punt? I'll do anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll do whatever. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to bring this up because uh, the, last week. Uh, uh, I thought you were picking up my books. At the, beginning, like <laughs> at the beginning of this podcasting season, uh, a listener, I forget who it was, apologize, asked about good hockey books, mm. and Dave raved about Ken Dryden's The Game. One of the best books I've ever read. And now I'm unfo- I'm reading it. I'm loving it. I'm, it's a bit of a slow read. It's been Christmas. Uh, yesterday, or um, on Friday, it feels like yesterday, when we recorded the last podcast, I said to Dave, oh, I'm reading The Game, and I'm really liking it, and I've never seen him look more disgusted. Well, actually, earlier... Like maybe twenty minutes before, I told him I'd bought a strip club T-shirt, and he was equally disgusted. Then, <laughs> but I'm easily disgusted. Yeah, I'm basically <laughs> an old woman. Yeah. Oh he, my, never. And he goes, "The game? What are you reading that piece of garbage <laughs> for?" And I'm like, "I'm like, but you, t- you, you gave it to me. <laughs> you gave me the book." And he's like, "I read about three quarters of that. I thought, or a quarter of that. I thought it was disgusting. We were talking about just how dis- <laughs> what a horrible book that was." I'm like, "No, no, no, the game." I felt like. Like uh, disapproving dad had come home, and I'm like, Dad, we can do this together. Uh, like, no, we ain't coloring that. You always go outside the lines. I don't even know if you're my kid. <laughs> um, but on the subject of, of Willie and coaching, it made me think of I wrote, when I was reading this. I wrote it down. I even put a sticky note in. But the way Scott, um, the way Ken Dryden talks about Scotty Bowman. Now, one of them's a really good junior coach, and the other one's probably the greatest coach in NHL history. Yep. But it made me think about how Willie coaches this year. And Ken Dryden wrote in, in the book, he's like, what's the most important job as a coach? And Bowman thought about it for a second, and he, thought, and he, and he sat there, and he was silent, and he goes, oh, to have the right players on the ice. And either, that makes perfect You know, it, it's just so simple. And then you think about how the Canucks are down 2-1 to one in, in, against Calgary. They've somehow held their own. And who do you see on the ice? Michael Shaput. Yeah, Megna, one of those, Jack Skilly. Mm. And it's just like that hockey net in Canada when you could hear the off air feed. Who do the, who does Willie have on the ice after a TV oh, timeout? Yeah, I remember that. Offensive zone, not right. the Sedins. If the, if, the, if, if the best coach in the world of all time says the key to good coaching is having the right players on the ice, mm-hmm. 
What's Willie doing? Now, to play devil's advocate, Scotty Bowman's version of the best players in this, he had a lot of players in that book on that team. Right. I, Lemare, I don't think those 70s... Ra- those oh, yeah. <laughs> Lemaire, Lambert, Shutt, L- you know, Lafleur, yeah. Savard, Robinson... He's always going to have the best players on the ice yeah, on any team. They're Bob Gainey. But a lot of teams back then Ray were Jean deeper. Ooh. The quality hadn't been well, thinned yes, out as yes much. Yes and no. There were about 30 pro- major league professional teams playing in North America at the time. In the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, because you had the other league, the old WHA, sucking mm. up players. They had Frank Mahovlich <laughs> playing for the Toronto Toros on Sunday afternoons. Yeah, it's too bad the NHL yeah, but- didn't have John Garrett. <laughs> no, I love John Garrett. I shouldn't oh, say that. He's a good guy. I like John Garrett. Uh, not that stupid Willie's Greg got- Millen playing for the Hartford <laughs> Whalers back then. Willie's got 12 forwards to choose from. He picks the three that are on the fourth line. Closest to the gate. No, he's got 11 forwards. Whatever. He's running it like a tight team. Why, why did he, yeah, I want to know what's going on in his head, too. He like, just why rolls those his, as opposed to anybody else? He just rolls his lines for the most part. The, like he's at the, Is that how you should be coaching with some no, strategy? Like, no. that's like, <laughs> Not that's late just, in the game. No, no that, that's, that's like, how Fred Durst would coach the that, team. That's Keep like rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. It's like shutting your brain off and just letting what happens happen. Line one, line two, line three, line four. Oh, they just scored on line four. So then how can he even call himself a coach? He's got the auto coach 2000 going. (laughs) It's the best in the business. It's how you coach kids hockey. Get away with it in the WHL even. But yeah, you get to the NHL and you it's like, a, it's good to roll four lines until you're when you, losing in the third period. You want a Calder Cup by too. By one. He, I think he he treats this team like a junior team. Better have an overager out there on every, li- on every line so that the young kids, you know, got some guidance out there. And like, I just, I don't. But isn't that even disrespectful to the players? I don't know. Not even to the city he and is, the fans, but to the players themselves. I, I'd be playing Bo Horvat until his legs fall off. Here's, right the, here's just a little basic example, and I don't know what other people think about this, but I ran it by Ryan and didn't sound crazy, I think. How has Bo Horvat not been on the Sedin's wing late in the game on power plays? Like, it's obviously they're the three players at the top. I mean, berchi has been up there, Because too, apparently but, that's not in Willie's mode. But, like, how has that not even been... Once or twice, something they tested out. Like, they used to load up Kessler in the Sedins late in games and on power plays all the time. You put two centers out generally late in the game to be safe. Horvat with the Twins is something Different that's coach. never been done. For, like, two shifts at the end of a third period in a one-goal game, how is that not something that's never even been no, he's got is that for questioned real? or thought about? Yeah, it's done. never been done. Huh. No, but he in the, in the last that minute... That seems they, like the most obvious coaching move. Are we Loading up. He never loads up lines. No, he spreads them out. He might put two centers out late in the game, and that's about the only changes I've seen. And usually the second guy gets off right away, so the regular... For what? Like the out. 75th minute of the game <laughs> or something? <laughs> it's frustrating. Yeah, like that's basic coaching. Like I'm not an expert coach in any way, shape, or form, but loading up your lines... Late in the game, you know, you do that with two units and you just spit them out for the last two minutes. You can do that when you're, you know, they each only have to play two more shifts or whatever. How has that not been done? I don't know. That was Canucks hour. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the last thing I want. They played two games this no, weekend. I'm guilty, of, I'm guilty of it too. It was a lot of, it was very Canuck content. Uh, he's talking, the one last thing about Scotty Bowman, he's talking about uh, Rich Cartra. I hope I'm saying that right. A Venezuelan hockey player, won four cups of the Habs. And he goes, Feel free to correct us, Rich. Uh, Bowman knows the enormous strength he has, talking about Katra and playing him when he needs to. And he goes, he, and he squanders none of it. So a good coach squanders none of the abilities of his players. Well, you know who Scotty Bowman wouldn't be squandering right now? Ch- Max Pacioretty. <laughs> <laughs> He's on fire. We um we were I I I I took a lot. I was quite happy with us naming Max Pacioretty the most overrated player in the NHL. He's market famous. Yeah, he's uh, he's that American guy that should be good. I think he's good. He's probably good. He's all right. Uh, yeah, he has 14 goals in the last 14 games, if I remember correctly, and he's got 34 points on the year. And the Habs somehow, despite being ridiculously injured, are yeah. first in the Atlantic. That team really turned it around. Carey Price. Mm. That Russian kid that was supposed to be a uh, cancer in the locker room and turned out to be exactly what uh, Mark Ale- oh, Alexander Radulov. Yeah. It, Evelyn's still there, and we all hate him. I do hate Alexi Emelin. You know what? It's funny. You uh, there's been a couple podcasts where you've 
been rather vocal about your disdain for Emlyn, and I'm like, I never really picked up on that because you know you're, but you never hear about it from the media. He's dirty, but he's been really dirty this year, and and he's it's always, always dirty. been dirty. But I've, it's never, I don't know. I guess I haven't been paying attention. But I, uh, he only hits you when he sees your numbers. That's I'm a Habs fan, and I'd say, yeah, I didn't yeah. see his numbers, so I didn't hit him, coach. <laughs> Good call, Lexi. I don't know why the ha- anyway. So the ha- I like to stretch for people. <laughs> That's my thing. Speaking of stretchers and hits. Yeah, line oh, I know. Could there not have like only short of Connor McDavid? This is the biggest disaster that could have possibly happened. So last year with to a Con- Canadian hockey team, like Patrick Laine is the only reason that you give a shit about the Winnipeg Jets or watch their right. highlights. Hey, Mark Shifley, come on! Eh. <laughs> I like Mark Shifley, but he's very vanilla. He's like the new Spezza. He's Spezza 2.0. <laughs> Was Spezza a late bloomer, and he go right in there? He uh, played in Binghamton. Well, like it was Sh- a funny lockout. It was a funny lockout year, so Spezza went he to played, Binghamton. Yeah. Mark Shifley has like a, he's like twenty three or twenty four now. Like he's had a slow. He's a couple off years. Yeah, if you look kind of wrote him off, wrote him off as a bust. Uh, Jake McCabe. I didn't know who he was until he knocked the shit out of uh, poor Patrick Line. Um, Is he related to Brian? Yeah, I'm sure it's his son. It's got to be. <laughs> I'm gonna say nephew. Uh, we could look cousin. At- Cousin McCabe. Are we placing bets? <laughs> well, anyway, it was the shot heard round Niagara for sure, and it's a clean hit. It's yeah. he's out with a concussion, and would you, if you were in McCabe's shoes, what would you do? Apologize. No, in you got you got Patrick Line, who's second or third in the I'm NHL fini- score. I'm finishing my check. Yeah, it's a it's a close game. Yeah, I'm finishing my check. Yeah, Paul, I got a job to do. Yep. Yeah. You you didn't. <laughs> He, he, it was a clean hit. It was within the rules, and it made it a big impact on the game. And yeah, you're. It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but they, he's got to learn. Keep your head up, kid. Did they not get rock'em sock'em hockey? And there's some, them? and that's the thing that gets lost. We we get so mad about these hits and all that, but there's some mm. onus on the guy who gets it too. You know, like you got to take care of yourself. Well, I mean, like he's coming high and across yeah. the middle, and he's reaching. Like we've seen this before. That, you know why? You want to know why guys like uh, Patrick Kane don't get hurt? They don't go balls Good to legal the wall team? like that. All yes, that too. <laughs> Great legal team, yeah. best in Buffalo. <laughs> um, you don't, you know, you don't go balls to the wall all the time. And maybe this is something that uh, eighteen-year-old rookies got to learn. Like mm. you, you get coached into doing that, like all the time. You got to try your hardest at every play. Some of these players, they don't like. They pick their spots. I think Crosby's kind of learned the hard way, and he's doing it now too. Like, and that's the thing that that's a guy with a history of head injuries. Yeah, like I could get to that puck, but maybe this time I don't because is maybe you didn't hustle on that play, but you're not going to do your team any favors on the injured reserve either. Like, no, and you've got to think long term. You're right; he's 18. If he wants to have a career, don't go chasing waterfalls. Timu like, didn't. P- yeah. Peter Forsberg used to do that a lot. Yeah. I mean, not Timo all did. of his injury Timo's- issues, but some of them. Did he? Just because he, you know, he wouldn't give up. I no, mean, bull in a china shop all the time. It's uh, it's an admirable quality, but it's you know, not necessarily the most intelligent way to play the game. It's not sustainable, and we've seen a yeah. lot of players, a lot of these bigger players like Patrick Line, who kind of fits the mold of a Forsberg. In fact, like a big, strong guy. Like, yeah, let's hope he learns from it. Timu learned. Timu got caught in Vancouver by Mike Pekka. Oh yeah, uh, a hit. There's not very many good angles of it, but it's on YouTube. Check it out. And yeah, he never did it again. Like and he talks about it. He's like, "Yeah, I learned my lesson that night. Two years in the league, I'd never been hit. Yeah, I was across the middle with my head down, admiring a pass. He finished me off. That's, that's like I never did it again. I always think like remember I remember the first time we played contact. I got I played contact hockey in like first year pee wee, and uh, I wasn't paying attention to the guy in the face off, and I was just looking at the puck, and he just knocked my ass straight to the ground. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm. Well, that wasn't fun. Well, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. And, be, and then I thought of Anton Rodin sitting on the sitting on the bench for you know the 60 minutes, and I remembered in like that same year when I wasn't that good, and the other players were good, and we were the coaches were starting to not roll for shorten lines, up, shorten up the bench. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a this is a, a a coach above Willie, and I was just sitting there. I'm like, geez, I only played like two shifts in the first period. Like, what what's going on here? So Got to spot Ryan in <laughs> all these all these events in uh, in so, hockey this week. So did you have a flashback and did you throw something at the TV to, uh, on Saturday night? You can't do that, Coach Dan. And then threw your remote <laughs> and just brought up all these repressed issues from your childhood. I that that's when you think of hockey on a on a on a human level on a personal level. Like when you when you've been in those situations in the game before, when you're like, why aren't I playing? 
I can't, and I, I'm not. What am I doing here? There were there were championship level games when I was a first year. You know how it always goes: first year, second year, yeah. where I didn't play a lot, and I always kept a pretty decent outlook on it. I always knew that the next season would be my time. Mm-hmm. But being a smaller guy and a late birthday, yeah, I kind of knew that as a first year player, I had more trouble than some of my friends who were like January and February birthdays. And we're a bit thicker. I knew that that first year, every other year of hockey growing up for me was fun. But that first year in a new level was always kind of a drag because everybody was just a little more bearded, a little more (laughs) bigger, a little stronger. (laughs) And so, yeah, like I would, you know, if it was a big game, like I would sit next to the backup goalie and and talk about the Simpsons. (laughs) That's how that went sometimes. But I never like I didn't pout. I didn't get mad. Well, uh, Rodine, Rodine can't do anything. He's or getting else, paid either way. But he couldn't be like, this is bullshit. Like, what's going on here? Or else they'd no. say he's got a bad attitude. If he did it through the media, I don't think anybody would really have a problem with it. But, like, he's a Swedish Elite League MVP. Take that for what it's worth. I don't put a lot of stock into that. Mm-hmm. However, I might... He's a skill player. I might try to, you know, at least power play him. If you're if you're gonna go five D, spot him in on the power play, maybe. Is it not comparable to Philip Larson though, and all the chances he got? If you get a skill guy that's supposed to fill a role that the team needs Ooh, right now, how's, how's he doing? Speaking of, concussions. he um is he's getting skating, but not with the team. <laughs> yeah, he got ab- oh jeez, he got knocked into oblivion literally. But we I mean, don't know what happened to him. Just yeah, coaching strategy wise. I guess they had him in training camp, but did they really know what they had with him? And when they saw it, he got so many chances at the mm-hmm. beginning of the season there. Like, how is Rodine not in the same boat? I don't know. I yeah. don't know, but hey. Or Reed wanted- Boucher, for that matter. Reed Boucher is supposed to be a goal scorer. Give yeah, him a shot. Put he, him on the speed line. He needs, four, he needs four practices. Around March, he'll be ready. <laughs> Jason Magna. Now, that's what you want on your top line on uh, NHL the pride team. Of the, the best thing to come out of Fort Lauderdale since Blue Meth. Now, <laughs> I wanted to talk about Mike Smith because I wanted to talk to the kids. I, okay. I've, been, I've been on a ranty mood lately about hockey karma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hockey karma is a real thing. Yeah. You cannot dispute it. It's science. It's my non-fanciest fancy stat out there, <laughs> but it's a real thing. And Mike Smith got on the horn. Paul didn't like what he heard, and he left the room. His delicate sensibilities. He just didn't want to didn't want to hear this. Poor I had sport. enough stuff. No, I was yeah. ready to file. Yeah, you, you had a deadline. And None you, of this for me. Yeah, Mike Smith, crabby, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. Got, so, it. got it. Got it. So you know, he 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 blows up. It's not a direct shot at his team, but it's certainly a shot across the bow. Right. He's got. We're not good enough. He didn't say I'm not good enough. We're not good enough. 2-2 tie against the division-leading team. You've had a really good road game. You get it into overtime. Gets the puck. Tries to make a fancy little play. Bang in the net. Oh. This is why you don't say anything ever. You don't give people bulletin board material. No. Or the he's hockey got He's got to, it's less than 24 hours later, he's got to walk into that dressing room after he gave the game away, saying the shit that he said in Vancouver that night. You can't blame you know we're not wow. we're not good enough our offense isn't good enough and then somebody some shitbag could that's, be like that's the hockey our gods that's the not hockey that gods good upstairs <laughs> so you kids out there especially you young goalies listen to the podcast <laughs> your team has one of those nights where they let, they hang it to dry for fifty shots what goes around comes around there's going to be a night where a squeaker is going to go through your legs. You're going to get distracted because your mom's waving at you in the crowd. <laughs> You're going to give up some bad goals. There's going to be some games where you play lights out and you lose, and that's going to happen. But there's going to be games where you let the fellas down, and you can bet your ass because they're taught from a young age the last thing that you do is rattle your own goaltender. They're going to walk by and tap you on the pads and tell you it's all right and then curse your name to the girlfriend after. <laughs> but like, do not blow your team up in the media. Do not berate your team after the game. Because what goes around comes around. And less than 24 hours later, Mike Smith gave away that hockey game. It was an inexcusably stupid mm-hmm. play. And the only reason I think he made it is because the hockey gods came down, infected his brain, <laughs> and gifted some Ducks no-name <laughs> scrub a ga- the biggest goal of his career. Some Ryan Getzloff, probably. So just <laughs> keep your mouth shut, your nose clean, and play hard. All right, can, I think- can you lead in and out with the uh, uh, coach's corner theme in that? that oh, was very- did, that was pretty good. Yeah. All right, Kids. all you young goals. Goalies out there, hockey gods will damn you. And you be pray, careful. <laughs> and you pray to those hey, hockey gods on Christmas. I don't That's, like I don't like Don Cherry's political associa- uh, associations or his views generally on anything. But I like it when he when he lectures about hockey gods and hockey karma because mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely true. You know who also don't uh, tempt fate. 
Now, no. now let's have some fun here. It's just being a good person too and a good teammate. Good teammate. Okay. This is our moment. How, how are the co- Coyotes going to make him captain like they did with Lulongo? <laughs> <laughs> with an attitude like that. Lulongo ain't never, you know, he never said anything like that. Mike Smith, be more like Lulongo. <laughs> Get that C, the C painted on your mask. <laughs> C stands for Canucks. Um, wink. Oh, wink. Uh, this is now we can we can we can uh, get a little more positive here. This is the part where we throw some zingers. Uh, the Dallas Stars had an emergency landing; their plane had to land because smoke was coming out the cockpit. And so, as per you, but like, you know, it didn't crash. Jamie Ben didn't go down. The Russians are hacking the planes now. What does that? What does that have to do about Jamie Ben not wanting to go down on women? <laughs> oh, plane yeah. didn't go down. In, in, yeah, I got the it. line is in typical fashion because Ryan scripts this for us. <laughs> <laughs> in in no, typical no. fashion, Jamie Ben didn't go down. However, but he, he was the did. first one to get off. Ah. <laughs> and he promptly went to sleep. <laughs> and Tyler Sagan watched and yeah. smoked a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was another question from. That's th- probably why there was smoke in the cockpit. <laughs> Was he watching because they have bunk beds? They share a room? Yeah. Tyler, Tyler Sagan seems like the kind of guy that would try to get his girlfriend to have sex with him while he's getting a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an enthusiast. We can hold still in the chair, babe. <laughs> he's going to do my arm while you do me. Hop on. <laughs> uh, speaking of Dallas Stars, um, listener uh, D- uh, Daniel at DV- DRVR134, he asked a question. He goes... Um, what do you think about hockey players walking around in their in their home team, like where the city they play in, wearing um, team apparel? Oh no, it's bush league. And in fact, when I worked for the Vancouver Canadians, uh-huh. this was a finable offense, a bang box, if you will. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? Like Henrik walking around in a Daniel jersey, like at the cactus or club, or just like a, a Canucks jacket, or like a like a like the team. varsity jacket? Because <laughs> I will see the guys around town occasionally in the workout gear once in okay. a blue moon. I think that's fine. If they're running the seawall, it's just the workout gear yeah. that they get issued. That's fine. The scenario that this je- this what were you saying? Yeah, yeah, I know. I just don't get what the issue. The scenario he, he, he the the listener suggested it was a bit of pe- like peacocking, like he was out for attention. Mm-hmm. It was in Dallas, mm-hmm. and he was at the gym working out wearing Dallas Stars apparel. Who is this? He didn't say who it was, oh. but he just wanted to know if that was a faux pas. Yes, it's a faux pas. I asked him... Also, it w- why would a hockey player need to go to a gym? Like, don't they have a gym at the yeah. American Airlines Center? So Are you a- sure it was a hockey player and not just someone some, in Dallas some, Stars? Some super fan who looks a little beefy and could be a hockey player? It was somebody from uh, came from Calgary, he it, said. It was me impersonating uh, Alish Hemsky to try to get into <laughs> a club. <laughs> I don't have a problem because yeah, they issue st- like I'm guessing like a lot of players will get like whatever the you just get standard stuff, stuff, yeah, and they probably give you a stack of the shirts that say like. Why would a road team whatever. player go to a random gym? But we it was were- a home team. Oh, it was like a Canuck going to Club 16 in a in a one of those slutty uh, V necks from Canadian Tire working out. <laughs> so we went to um, we went to Boise, Idaho, once with the with the Canadians while okay. I was working there because we were playing the against the Boise Hawks yeah. and a uh, legendary Ox. first baseman Trevor Gretzky. Uh-huh. Uh, we were playing them in the championship series, but we were all together like staff and players, and we went out to uh, P.F. Chang's for dinner <laughs> one night, <laughs> and one of the players on the team, Balbino Funmayar, our power hitting third baseman, <laughs> wore a Toronto Blue Jays hat. And a Toronto Blue Jays T-shirt because he plays for them. Well, he's property of yeah. the Toronto uh, Blue Jays, sure. but it was a, it wasn't a team issue. It was like a flat brim with the sticker still in it. I brought this deal. from home. He bought it from <laughs> Lids. Totally, to- totally a Lids purchase, absolutely. And uh, our clubby, like which is our clubhouse manager, Glenn Hall, uh, immediately bang boxed him twenty five dollar fine right there. Well, you, if you bring it from home, he had to buy apps. He had to buy some appies, <laughs> <laughs> some PF Chang, some appies. PF Chang appies. Yeah, it's a faux pas. Now, I would argue, if we, if I was caught out wearing my pucks on that t shirt anywhere but softball, mm-hmm. that could be a fine. But then you, you wear, wear it all the time. You're wearing, I'm wearing yours it right, right now. now. I was found myself on Google Street View in the pucks on net t shirt today. Yeah, oh, <laughs> with your with your giant head, it was <laughs> easy to spot. And blurred face. <laughs> they, there's no chance that's not Ryan. Uh, it was uh, after a softball game up by uh, size twelve head. <laughs> 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 they have to make it in Tennessee. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> Ship it in. But they uh, after a softball game, I was walking uh, to a car to go by around Oak and Forty Third, and I saw the Google thing drive by, and I'm like, 
hey, look at that. And I didn't even think about it like, like this is almost like 10 months ago. Mm-hmm. And I've, I th- randomly thought about it today and I found myself and they've blurred out my face and they've blurred out pucks on net <laughs> on the t-shirt. No free promos from Google. Maybe they thought you can it, still see the crow. Maybe do they, do they only do they have their own hockey podcast? Probably those dicks, oh, fucking pricks. You uh, can Google us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Hull and Oats podcast with Brett Hall and Adam Oats. Not Taylor Hall. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the, you got you to win thirty career games in the show to get your own. Podcast. Do we do we care about uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets winning streak? We didn't talk about that. On it Friday. ended. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a pretty good win streak. Okay, what was the headline in the elevator? It was like John Tortorella, a- amicable fellow, or something like that. Was the headline in the elevator <laughs> of the building here? Paul's I, got reason to believe that Torts is is paying for fake headlines. I, I think he bought it because both headlines seemed like fake, like they didn't have anything to do with news. Well, <laughs> it's fake news. They had a problem with that. That's how Trump got in the White House. So yeah, this was just like John Tortorella, actually amicable fellow. That was the headline, and the, the sponsor content. Other, yeah, we, by we, Columbus. we get our stuff from the onion. That's Do you okay. know what the other headline was in there? No. Get off the couch and go chop some wood. That's right. There you go. Because that's what you're going to tell a Yale Town yuppie. <laughs> if you want to lose some weight, go chop some wood. If you can find a tree, let us know. Maybe. <laughs> well, John might have paid for that one, too. That sounds like something he would tell his players to do. If David, go walk your dog and chop some wood. I tell you, if David Booth was chopping some wood, he'd be playing a lot better. What? He's, it's he's, 545. I didn't get on the Point Roberts chopper. I'm going to miss warm-up. No, no. He got locked in his Murphy bed in his office. For me, that was one of my... It's been one of my highlights of working in the NHL is when I was in the concourse and watched his dog shit like right on the concourse. Champ. Little champ. Just took a big... Big f***ing dump. Would you look at that? Right in the soccer spot, too. Somebody will clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't care about the Jackets winning 16 games. Nah, it was a nice yeah. little run. They lost the last two. He backskated we'll care about he back- them? Oh, them hang yesterday. On. When they win 16 games come June. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, let's go around the horn. Paul, <laughs> Columbus Blue Jackets, legitimate Stanley Cup contender. Yes or no? Say it. When you label it like that, I'd probably say no still, but stranger things have happened. Um, this is a weird year where just about anybody that's getting in the playoffs could probably have a good chance, but I don't think they'll get in the playoffs. Gita? Uh, if they get in the playoffs, I see a second round exit. I think that the Columbus Blue Jackets should start eating Eggo waffles because this is the strangest thing that's <laughs> ever happened. John Tortorella is coaching his balls off. Guys like Brendan Saad and Nick Foligno or Cam Atkinson, 10th in score. Yeah. It's another one, though, I look at and I go, is it John Tortorella or is it just like they had this stockpile of young guys that have all taken big steps forward and some of the veterans have been playing better than expected? And good year, bad year, Bobrovsky's having a good year. <laughs> so, he did it in Tampa. I mean, he does. Well, yeah. I, it was a good roster there, too. Yeah. And I'm not saying John Terrell is a bad coach. No, but not at all. This is a, a roster that won't fall apart as easily, even if he is acting crazy like the Canucks roster did what under if, what John if, What if Scott Hartnell starts falling down again? <laughs> down goes the, I, you know, he's been good, but I don't think it would all fall on Hartnell. So if it's like, if, the, if it was the unsolved mysteries of the Edmonton Oilers, is it the stranger things of the Columbus Blue Jackets? Uh, I have to say so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who they played or why they were winning so many games. I think it's the Waffles. Have you ever even have seen? Have they been Stranger playing things, the right? Columbus no. Blue Jackets this season? You you play the I said, have they been playing the Columbus have Blues? Have they been playing Jackets? themselves? <laughs> <laughs> you could play the theme music for Stranger Things here too. I'll there's play. A, there's a I feel like we are a little bit in the upside down. The Blue Jackets and the Wild are well, playing I hadn't well. S- I hadn't seen John Tortorella in a while. He was turned out he was trapped in the wall. <laughs> and John Tortorella had this huge smile on his face for the whole post game when he was in Vancouver. Like I, he's communicating his light cha- his line changes through the lights. Opposite. It was opposite. Oh, oh what's that, John? <laughs> oh. And then Willie's like, "Oh, that's how he does it. Oh, geez, uh, I should try that. I've been trying the auto coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this big bot. But no matter what, first line, second line, third line, fourth line. It's on fairness mode. It's stuck on, <laughs> it's stuck on peewee hockey mode." <laughs> Get it off House League. Somebody unplug this damn thing. For the it's <laughs> it's rotating the goalies even. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we calling that? The Auto Coach 3000? Auto Can Coach 3000. Willie's Auto Coach. In Willie mode. <laughs> Is it, no, it's the Auto Coach 30 because that's how many wins it gets you. <laughs> 3000 sounds too new and 
Yeah. Yeah, it's the auto coach 30 because it gets you 30 wins and not much more. Uh, did anybody see the outdoor? Uh, one last couple of things that we want to talk about. Uh, did anybody see the outdoor, the AHL outdoor game? The uh, AHL has an outdoor game. Well, it was in I a watched, swimming pool. I watched Finding Nemo, but turned out it was the, <laughs> the AHL outdoor <laughs> classic. <laughs> Uh, How do they not stop that? How do that, they let that go? They just g- looked horribly dangerous. Mm. They got uh, it rained the whole time. And well, they, I think it rained in the first, and then it cleared up. But for <clears throat> at least one period, it was like if they stopped or took a shot, just huge waves were hitting the other players or I w- whatever. I would describe it as soupy. It was very <laughs> soupy. And uh, Wayne Gretzky sat out the alumni game. I don't know why he would have played. Well, he he <laughs> was one of the more famous Bakersfield Condors in in that team history. <laughs> Um, no, Ontario Rainman. Oh, what team was he going to play for? He would have played for the Condors because of the oh. Oilers. Even though they were playing the Rain, which is the LA Kings alumni. Yeah. which In is, California. Which I'm just, it hurts to put the logistics on the felt board. But would, yeah. th- would there have been people at that game if it hadn't rained? Would people have gone to that shitty little college stadium? They said 10,000 people were there in Bakersfield that gutted it out in the rain, which mm-hmm. is pretty endearing. But, but would they have gotten 30,000 if they hadn't? It's the AHL. Who cares? AHL. Remember like when Hartford did this with the Connecticut Whale? They mm. had that outdoor game and there's nobody there. <laughs> no one came. There are a lot of forgotten outdoor games of recent memory. Um, there's, there's one between the Lake Erie Monsters and some other AHL team. Uh, Spokane played the Co- the Spokane Chiefs played the Kootenai Ice in a ba- in the baseball stadium in Spokane, which is probably oh. smaller than the rink that Chiefs play in. <laughs> which is yeah, I've been to that stadium, the home of the Spokane Indians, which is really confusing because it's a Texas Rangers affiliate. <laughs> 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 you couldn't call it Spokane Rangers, just you know, get rid yeah, of. They've that been name. the Indians for a long time, and that name is an offensive, and we're keeping it. And that's the way we like it here in Spokane. There's no reason why that team's still called the Spokane Indians, but and, they are. Uh, the Hitmen <laughs> played, I think, the Pats in a. An outdoor game around the Heritage Classic weekend. Okay. Um, the I haven't like the Leafs and Habs farm teams played like a million outdoor games against yes, each other. They have. they have played a lot of outdoor games. It's just they all. Who cares? How do you guys pay attention to all this? I. Why would it matter? We air shell outdoor. I no. I went on a Google. CHL I went on a Google outdoor. a mad Google thing to see how many outdoor pro games there's been. I was curious. Under ninety two okay. probably. Uh, Ty Conklin started every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Wasn't he in one of the alumni games? Yeah, he's played a lot of outdoor games. Oh, because like he played in most of the outdoor games. And he then was he played like, outdoor as a goalie for Detroit. Uh, Jeez. I was a little, uh, I was a little cheesed off to see Wayne Gretzky play in the St. Louis Blues alumni game. Nah, because he just played in the Edmonton Oilers alumni game, and he's like, "I'm not playing hockey anymore. That's it for me." It's, um, it's got an wait. Does he play multiple alumni games a year? He played Apparently. two this year, huh. almost three, but he pulled the groin. Yeah, he would have okay. played in the AHL alumni game, but he pulled his groin. Um, he's getting ready for a comeback. <laughs> he's he's getting in shape. <laughs> he, uh, I don't really like Wayne Gretzky. I don't wow. like it. as a human. Uh, I used to love him, but his like some of the decisions he's made, yes, in his post playing well, career, have it, hurt his brand. I'm just tired of watching him. I was talking to when he was walking around with Stephen Harper. That that's was the one I yeah. thought it was Ryan too. <laughs> that was kind of the end of that for me. Forget that. It's all about how boring he is as an intermission <laughs> if, panel guest. If you're a conservative, of course you love Gretzky for doing that. I could see that, but yeah, if you're not, it's just like piling on, mm. you know, unnecessary. Right. But I, we t- I've talked about this before, but it just seems like he does not like hockey. And his wine sucks. He doesn't want to be on air. And his turtlenecks, he, he only has three of them left, so he doesn't want to get him too sweaty. Yeah, they don't make new ones anymore. They're getting frayed. 99. <laughs> That's my number. Well, and then, yeah, we were talking about just as a player. I mean, it's it's one of those weird ones where, yeah, you love him and you, you respect him. And he's great, but he's like Superman. We're like, there are people who love Superman as a superhero. I'm going to get a little nerdy here. But he's good at everything. Like, like how do you what's beat the him? fun in that? How is that good literature, entertaining uh, anything? I, I don't know anything. If you're, about good, at, <laughs> if you're good at anything, like everything. The thing that I like, I like. I don't, I don't know. And then people fell out of love with Superman. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Superman don't know. never made any money. And then he died. You know what? Su- Superman has kryptonite. Love that song. Wayne, <laughs> Wayne's kryptonite is uh, is uh, is blonde women who were in Police Academy. Is it, oh, I was going to say... Never uh, won another cup after Janet <laughs> came along. <laughs> I was going to say media scandals involving his daughter, but, you know, we'll both work fine. And, uh, oh, my wife was gambling, not yeah. me. 
She put all the money on the Reds that game. 500 grand in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Janet's going to the sports book. My ass, Wayne. I just, I don't. You got 99 problems, but your wife isn't one. (laughs) (laughs) It's the ponies. (laughs) But I, I just don't like listening to him talk about hockey. Because you know how like some it's just it's it Wayne Gretzky he's not a good guest he doesn't I don't want him ever on this show no I, you know are is he getting he's on? not a black ace I, w- I would have him on the show you guys don't why have to so we can talk about it. yeah I really liked hockey it's cool yeah it's fun yeah I miss it yeah Connor McDavid's a good hockey player he's gonna break my records well you know if it was back then he probably could. I might sit in his lap and tell him what I want for Christmas so Wayne Gretzky <laughs> is Santa Claus now but yeah we know this show only ever <laughs> talks about hockey. And numbers and stuff. So it's not like we could ask Wayne Gretzky some interesting questions. You mean like... I would want to know all about what happened on the road in the 80s yeah, with I don't, the Oilers. I That's bet, all I'd ask You know about. what? I bet he'd have some no valuable comments. insight. He could shed some valuable insight did about you ever, what's going on Tinder. Did you ever mm. hook up with Tiffany at the mall? Do you want to talk about your Tinder? Pop A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, hang on. Let me introduce this segment. <laughs> it's time for Romance Quarter with Gita. I thought it was called <laughs> Dump and Chase. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's do that again. It's time for our, we're, we're going to kick off our spinoff podcast with this little in segment called Dump and Chase. Let let's us know if we should keep doing it. So I've recently gotten back on the Tinder and um, I've noticed a bit of a trend that most guys within one or two messages want to talk about masturbating. <laughs> uh, how, how is that a way to open a conversation with somebody? Like you don't know the person's sense of humor and I have one. Um, Gita, you are not a funny person. No, you don't I'm laugh. Pretty- I'm dark and broody, and I take myself very seriously. I got you a slinky for Christmas, and you strained it. <laughs> um, so give me an example of how this masturbation comes up in a, in a, in a conversation. Well, yesterday, I'm, a guy started a conversation with me. Yeah. So I you know, said, so how was your weekend? What did you get up to? He's like, oh, not much. I sat at home, watched TV, and was jerking off. And then Gita was asking us if this is like something that crosses our minds. Well, I can he, honestly say I've I've never messaged anyone with that. And an hour before early you guys, in a conversation or later in a conversation, an hour before you guys showed up, a guy texted me a gif. Of, was it of him masturbating? It was a gif of a guy with cum all over his face. Was it? Yeah, I thought that was Saran wrap. No, it's it's it was it was semen. Oh, I, I thought that was the the Jim Carrey tape g- gif. Nope, it was semen. I didn't look close enough. Oh Jesus! So th- this is why I'm asking. As men, well, here's I'm, no, of course I'm, not. That's horribly <laughs> disrespectful. Are you sure it wasn't just Jim Carrey with tape? Well, we'll, we'll look at it after. We'll, we'll look at it afterwards. But the problem Dave here, Dave and I saw one thing. I was like, no, you two thought yeah. something totally different. The problem here is you're using the term men, and oh, these yeah. are boys who think that. If I start talking about my penis, she's going to want to see it in some pics, and then I'm going to be over to her place with a bucket of chicken, and away you go. Have some chicken, <laughs> maybe some sex, Call see what nice. happens. Um, As a woman, I don't want to continue speaking to you. Me? What did I do? No, not you, personally. Uh, no, but guy, uh, guys, seriously, that's, this, this doesn't work. Oh, man. That's... Whatever issues you need to sort out with your therapist or <laughs> I'm sorry, whatever. on behalf of... The gender, even though I would never do that, Gita. Do you I'm sorry you have to see that. <laughs> We're going to have a press no conference. One's ever, I've had some weird messages, the little sort of guys online want, dating stuff I've done. Wait, what did girls say? What, what did girls say to you? P-Mac, Not rude I'm, stuff, P-Mac, though. I'm just sitting at home masturbating. What are you doing, pal? It's more, I, I'll get the one like, you'll get a message like, yeah. hey, how's it going? Really simple. I'll right. Be right. I'll be you right don't over. respond within like an hour or two. Yeah. I've gotten the follow-up like, what, you think you're too good for me? You're not that good looking. <laughs> Whoa! From women. And that's about us. And I've heard those stories from women, and I'm always like, that's awful. And then it happened to me a couple times. I was like, what's up with people? I was at the gym. I wasn't going to dig into my pocket for my phone. So low level compared to like, yeah, what you get. Like, that's ridiculous. How was that even something, guys? Here's t- but, I mean, trolls. You see Twitter. Oh, these aren't trolls. So these are horny guys. But, yeah. Oh yeah. It's so, but I I wonder sometimes if it's just like they're just doing it because they think it's funny and ne- they're like, oh look what I said. Next to this time girl. this happens, can you catfish him just so we can beat the crap out of him? 
It's oh yeah, be come, that. come right over. You're nowhere to be found. It's just me and Ryan and Paul with pipes. <laughs> and it's that old guy from the hockey game. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> ah, uh, where'd you bring me? Where's the beer and pizza? If, here, listen, here's a tip for you, Gita, and for any uh, lady listeners uh, at home listening right now. If on Tinder, the gentleman spells come, C-U-M, in any capacity whatsoever before meeting him, just, just unmatch him. And if he's going to invite you, if he says that uh, an ideal first date should be him going to your place of residence, it means that... He's a murderer. And he has a twin yeah. bed, and that twin bed is in a messy room, and that messy room is in a suburban house owned by his by his parents. And also they're like ferrets that. running free. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the smelliest Because, because I, I've had a guy text me pictures of ferrets crawling around his bed, and I'm like, yeah... No. I don't get in a vermin bed. No. No. Uh, so that'll... So, ra- wow. This is... Yeah, maybe this could be a whole podcast. I'm sorry that this Dump and Chase hockey. with Gita. <laughs> that was Dump and Chase with Gita. Next week. Let us know if you want more episodes and we'll start recording he, them. He dumped in a masturbation reference and oh. we chased him out of there. Next week I talk about how I keep running into Stephanie One outside the McDonald's by a par- my apartment. Maybe find a new one. I'm looking, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Fuck, move. You know what?